Destination Mac, same thing, sending the data back. Now, this is all great, but because we're on the same network here, our LAN is as far as our Layer 2 can take us. Now, that's an interesting way of explaining it. This is my LAN. Can my LAN transfer over to here? No, it can't. Even though if this PC had the same had an IP address in the same network, these routers cannot have two interfaces in the same network. So this here is going to be in a whole different network. Now remember, it's forwarded by the layer three address, but it still has to build layer three and layer two. And this router is only gonna accept that information if the layer two information is its own. Now, you'll find that this might not be the case with layer three inter interfaces, but we'll find that out in the future when we actually do a lab. So this is how far this data goes. This is the distance of your LAN. Now, we call this the edge because this is as far out as it goes. And we call this the edge because this is as far out as it goes. So you have these two types of edges. So let's look at it from this perspective, doing it up and down. Here I have a router, router one, that goes to the cloud. This is the edge of our network, our LAN network, right here. Because once this traffic hits this router, he's going to be sending that traffic beyond this network. See, originally, if this was a one, uh, 192, We'll make this 192.168.1.1. And we'll make this PC 192.168.1.10. Now let's think about this. He goes and he needs to send something outside of his network. He's going to send it to what? His default gateway. Which is 1.1. Default gateway is 192.168.1.1. He's trying to communicate with a 192.200 address. So when he sends this data out, his source IP is going to be 192.168.1.10. His destination IP is going to be 192.200.200.10. This is going to be his layer three information. What's his layer two? His source MAC is going to be 66 colon 66, which is himself. His destination MAC is going to be, what was that again? That's right. The MAC address of the default gateway, which we'll just say it's a, we'll just say 1111, 1111. So now because we have the destination MAC address of 1111, Let's think about how this is in here. If this is a MAC address of 1111, he goes to send data. This switch port here, which is port, uh, we'll say port 10. In the MAC address table, he's going to have 1111 belongs to port 10. Switch one is going to send that information over to switch two. So from switch two's perspective, he's going to say, okay, now this might be port 11 sitting here. From switch two's perspective, he's gonna say, in order for me to get to 1111, I need to send this out port 11. PC three is gonna do the same thing in its MAC address table. So three is gonna send that traffic down as well Starting to see what's happening. As this data is coming down, these switches know how to get to this MAC address. So now if I am going to be forwarding based on the destination of 1111, that's going to go up to this switch as this data is going into this switch six. Switch six is going to say, oh, 1111, I have to send that out this port. That goes all the way up to switch three. Switch three says, oh, 1111, that needs to go out this port. Switch one says, oh, 1111, that needs to go out what? This port. Switch one 
will send that traffic down and Switch 2 will see that data being sourced on this port. Which that tells you, you can have more than one MAC address on a particular port. So if I have here, let's look at this. Switch uh, PC1, we'll say it's 1-1. One, one. 2 is 2-2. Two, two. This data goes into here. The first thing this switch is going to do is say, and we'll say this is port 1, this is port 2, this is port 3, this is port uh, 4, and this is port 11. So PC1 is going to send data out. This switch is going to say, okay, so I'm going to look at the source MAC address. I'm going to put it in my table. So MAC address of 1 colon 1 equals port 1. And that's in this switch's database, in this MAC address table. Now, that traffic is trying to get somewhere. So what happens when that data needs to go up to here? It's, it's going to leave this port. It's going to go up to this port. And this port's going to say, um, I got data coming in on this port. What's the MAC address? What's the source MAC? Oh, 1-1. One, one. So then that goes in this table. Uh, what port is this? We'll make this port 5. And he's going to say 1 colon 1 equals port 5. So that means with these uplinks, if I have 10 PCs sitting here, that means this switch will know for those 10 devices, it's going to be in the MAC address table. So now when Switch 2 gets any information for the 10 PCs sitting down here, he knows it needs to go through this port. That's why it's very crucial for the Switch to look at the source MAC address at all times. And these tables are built based on the traffic that's coming through. But what about a broadcast? The first thing a PC does is sends out a broadcast. What's that broadcast? DHCP. Let's think about this broadcast. I need a DHCP server. That information comes through here. What does a switch do with a broadcast? Sends out all ports except the one it came in on. The first thing Switch 4 is going to do before he sends that broadcast, though, is look at what? The source MAC address. Puts it in a table. And if it goes out all ports when it came in on, what's it going to do? It's going to hit this port. First thing a switch is going to do is look at that source MAC address. And bam, goes in this table. Then he's going to send it out here. What's this switch going to do when he gets that broadcast? Bam. Put the 1-1 one one in his MAC address table because the first thing he's going to do is look at the source. And then it's going to go out here. And then PC3 is going to get it. Then it's going to go out here. PC6 is going to get it. And it's going to go out this port and this port. And switch 1 is going to get it. Now, this is how they're building all their tables. So when this is done, and PC3 wants to send that traffic coming up here. By the time it gets up here and hits this router, it's all been carried by the layer 2 information. Every decision from switch to switch was made by the destination MAC. And its local table in each one of the, or each one of the switches. Wow, that's awesome. I never even had to look into layer 3 information. All done by layer 2. But once we get to this router, this router is going to look at the destination MAC information and says, oh, that's, that really is for me. I'm going to strip this off because I don't base my decisioning on that. I'm opening it because it's for me. Oh, there's some layer 3 information here. Source and destination IP. Uh, 200 to 200. Oh, well, that goes out this interface. Let me send it out here. And, of course, he's going to rebuild the source and destination IP addresses, keep them the same, and then rebuild or, or rebuild the uh, source MAC and destination with the proper source and destination MAC addresses. Your local area network goes as far as the edge of your network. So this defines some edges here. Obviously, where I'm marked here is my first edge. That's one edge. That means past this router, I can no longer, you're no longer on my network. 
You're no longer on my subnet. So now, where else do we have an edge? Here. Here's an edge. Because past this PC, there's nothing else. That's it. Which means also, this switch is considered the edge of our switch network. And this will be the edge of our switch network. If we wanted to say, okay, what's the edge, what's the edge of our switch network? These will be the edges. Because that's as far as the switches goes. If you want to consider them as hops, you can say um, one, two hops away this way, one, two hops of this way, and one, two hops this way. But our edge of our network means that we go no farther, and that's what our edge means. So your LAN goes as far as your your layer your layer two information can carry you. That's the best way to explain it. My layer two from PC three that my layer two information can carry me. To the edge of this router, it can also carry me up to the switch, up to switch 2, up to switch 4, down to PC 1, PC 2, PC 3, which is itself, and up to switch 3. There's the size of my LAN right there. That means PC 3 can travel this way, can travel this way, can travel this way can travel this way and can travel this way and that's how far our land can go i triple e i triple e is an organization called institute of electrical and electronic engineers that is what i triple e is they are just an organization that sets standards for protocols, which means if you want a protocol to be a standard, this organization will be one of the ones most likely you want to deal with. If you want to implement a protocol or use a particular protocol in your device, let's say I want to build Kyle Router, Kyle Incorporated Routers, then there's certain standards that I would have to follow. Well, this will be a good place to start. Talk to them and say, hey, you know, uh, I want to run OSPF on my device. IEEE says, okay, well, you have to follow these standards. Does that mean that's exactly what's going to happen? No. I'm just trying to tell you that the IEEE will, will has certain standards. And if you follow these standards, you will be an IEEE number. So, spanning tree. Spanning tree has an 802.1D standard. This is an IEEE number, but it's just an organization. And you're going to hear it a lot in, your, in, 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 in the networking world. So let's talk about the data link layer, uh, the data link layer. The data link layer is your layer two layer, because notice that we have the physical, and then we have the data link layer which is sitting right right on top of that which is my layer two then we have my network layer which is layer three we say layer three and layer two all the time but we're not really calling them by their real names the data link layer is layer two data link provides reliable communication over the media hmm well that's awfully vague ethernet divides the data link into two sections LLC and mac okay well, MAC makes sense. We talked about MAC addresses. But this LLC, what is that? It's called Link Logical Control. Now, the Link Logical Control layer, which is a layer within layer 2, controls frame synchronization, flow control, and error checking. That's it. Is this something that you interact with? No. Is this something that you need to know? I mean, yes, for your exam. Flow control is the ability of controlling the flow from one network card to another. Notice that we have the keyword logical, which means this will be a logical connection between two devices. And we're talking about the link. So when we talk about the link, that means obviously we're talking about the connection between one network card and another network card. And here's our physical link, but we're gonna have these logical sessions between these network cards 
And something has to control this logical link that we have between the two network cards. And that logical link will be controlled by the LLC. And the LLC will have frame synchronization. It will control the flow, or we should say the speed, making sure that we have the right amount of speed between the two. So one's not getting the speed, or getting in the data too fast, backing up, dropping, uh, dropping frames, stuff like that. And error checking, making sure that when we leave the data from this side, it's not corrupted by the time it gets on this side. It acts as an interface between media access control. Media access control. Oh, MAC addresses. And it acts as an interface between the network layer and the MAC address. Okay. Do I really know in detail what that is? You can find out. All depends on how deep you want to go. It provides multiplexing. We talked about multiplexing, being able to being able to have different medias and use port numbers to a def to define those medias or different protocols. I'm sorry, different protocols going across the same media. It provides multiplexing mechanisms so protocols to be trans uh, transported over the same network media and can also provide flow control mechanisms. Determines when a device can send data over the media. CSMACD, Carry Sense Multi Access Collision Detection. Well, there you go. Now you know where CSMACD sits. It sits at layer two. Guys, that's what the data link does. When you start reading about the data link, it just gets so confusing because you're like, wait, we got the link logical control and the MAC addresses. But what's going to happen is you're going to be focused on the MAC addresses. You're not even going to be focused on the link logical control. Seriously, this is all you're going to really be focusing on. And eventually this is going to go on the back burner. But just have an understanding of what the link logical control is. Ethernet. Notice we're getting in all these terms and definitions now we talked about IEEE the data link uh, layer and Ethernet I like talking about these separately because these are one of the most three confusing things ever when people start reading about it because it goes into so much detail to a level of too much detail and you're just like I, I, I really don't know what this does Ethernet is a set of standard rules wow what's a set of rules it's a protocol it just Ethernet is just rules. Whose rules? Not your rules, not my rules. These are not rules you manipulate. They're not rules you're going in and configure. These are rules set by IEEE that must be followed if you want to communicate with other Ethernets. So Ethernet is a set of standard rules. That software and hardware devices will use for creating communication for local area networks. Well, isn't that